And uh, this uh, presentation composed of two parts. I start with a three minute uh, video to give you a vision of where you're going for cloud computing, scalability assessment and improvement. So it's a vision presentation and talks about the impact on the environment. And then I give you a 30 minute talk with the details of the research results and uh, the forward looking research uh, activities that we are planning to implement in the next uh, few years. So here goes the video. Quantitative assessment of the benefits of investments in cloud infrastructure is difficult because of the lack of a holistic architecture view. This is a very important business problem that impacts IT solutions ability to scale up. Approaches provided by cloud-based solutions are biased towards resource scaling. These approaches can have a negative impact on the data center power footprint. In 2016, it was reported that the world's data centers used more than Britain's total electricity consumption at 3% of the global electricity supply and accounting for about 2% of total greenhouse gas emissions data centers have the same carbon footprint as the aviation industry. Our methodology combines elasticity solutions using resource scaling with a scalability engineering approach. To ensure that the components used to build these solutions are engineered using sound architecture and performance patterns. Using component failure identification based on performance ANI patterns and recommendations for refactoring, we were able to successfully identify which component had the most impact on the system ability to meet business needs. eSULAB Solutions Product PPTAM is a cloud service that integrates with existing DevOps and IT automation workflows. Applied in production and testing, it allows DevOps teams to automatically identify and remove scalability bottlenecks. Enterprises supporting large mission-critical systems that need to scale to millions of simultaneous users. We are eSulab Solutions. We employ an open collaboration model for technology development with presence in several continents. The challenge we are addressing is to assess performance of architectural deployment alternatives under fuzzy requirements. Our business-focused dashboard metrics supports the assessment of investment alternatives using a quantitative model-based optimization approach by accounting for operational usage, current deployment, and software defects. We successfully identified which component has the most impact on the large telecom system ability to meet business needs. Our long-term vision is to develop components to automatically integrate the PPTAM approach into existing continuous integration continuous development pipelines. If you are interested in applying our methodology, please give us a call for a free consultation. Now we move to the presentation. So this is the 30 minute presentation. Now integrating automated scalability assessments and improvement into DevOps, our team is using open collaboration methodology and we have professors and PhD students in several continents. We have uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, uh, Federal N University of Stuttgart, you have the Free University of Bolzano, we have uh, a PhD student that works at Novatech in Stuttgart, and I am located near Princeton University. 
here are some of my career highlights. And basically the ISO Lab Solutions is focused on the automated scalability assessment in DevOps and micros microservice architectures. So site crashes due to scalability issues can have significant impact on business success. Some examples of software scalability site crashes due to overload conditions is the Canadian immigration site that crashed November 10, 2016, after the results of the last presidential elections broadcast by American TV network floods not. Recently, New York State labor website crashed due to the surge of COVID-19 related unemployment applications. These are rare but painful events that need to be planned for in business continuity analysis efforts and disaster recovery plans. More common cause of poor performance and scalability is the lack of proper software engineering, including performance and scalability. Application performance has a direct impact on business success as it impacts perception, trust, and sales. 50% of online customers leave the website if the site response is larger than two seconds. Only 40% of the customer do return after having experienced a performance problem. The chart shown in the slide illustrates the user perception of performance. Immediate response is perceived. If response time is less than 0.1 seconds, user notice delay and sense of flow is lost when response time approaches one second. User loses focus when response time increases to 10 seconds. If response time is larger than 10 seconds, user initiates different activities and need to do a context switch. The operational profile is a quantitative characterization of how a system will be used. It supports increased productivity, increased performance, and increased scalability if testing is prioritized, take into account operational usage. The slide illustrates some of the several ways the operation profile can be represented as a load versus observed load situations, as a histogram using behavioral models and mix, or as a table. DevOps is a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing a change to a system and the change being placed into normal production while ensuring high quality. The practices used are agile, cultural change, automation, CD pipelines, infrastructure as code, microservices, monitoring, Docker, polyglot, live experimentation. So, we address in our methodology some of the challenges and opportunities to implement performance and scalability testing in DevOps environments. Specifically, we propose a methodology called production and performance testing based application monitoring, PPTAM, to integrate established quality assurance methodologies while supporting DevOps practices. So we are trying to balance the needs of quality assurance with the needs and practices of DevOps. So PPTAM, Production Performance Testing Based Application Monitoring, is a two ecosystem and the goal is to automatically identify what's going on. So you run your performance test, your scalability test, your reliability test, is it a pass or it's a failure? How can you do this automatically? Right? And then if there is a fail, the next question is where in your system is the failure? Which component is responsible for scalability model? And once you have found that, the next question is, how can I automatically recommend corrections to the problem? What kind of patterns were used? What kind of performance anti-pattern 
observes. Ah, probably observes. The performance of the pattern is uh, a common set of best practices that have been documented in literature. And in the end of the talk, we're going to discuss in detail some performance and pick patterns. How can we automatically recommend options for corrections? So in this uh, methodology, we use the operational profile to generate and weigh low tests through application performance monitoring integration. We introduce a new approach to measure baseline scalability requirements using bench flow integration. We define a scalability metric that allows for a quantitative comparison of deployment alternatives, and we provide integration to mobile device dashboards. In addition, as future research, we propose to integrate the approach with performance anti-patterns detection and refactoring models. So the load testing is the process of assessing the system under load in order to uncover load-related problems and certify the system ability to be performance and scalability requirements. One of the roadblocks in integrating load testing to DevOps is the lack of performance requirements that can support the definition of load testing pass-fail criteria. In this slide, we illustrate how PPTM approach automates the definition of pass-fail criteria. The operational profile expected operating point for scalability is depicted by the solid black vertical line. A low load test measures the average and standard deviations of response time. Scalability requirements as defined as the tolerated response times for system one and system two by computing average plus three standard deviations of the no load measurement. As can be seen from the plot, by following the bold black line at the operating point scalability says, system two passes the scalability test, while the non-scalable system one fails the scalability test. And this because uh, the, the plots, they are inside the range for system two and outside the range for system one. And the picture also shows you the maximum supported workload situation, the tolerated response times, and the points where the scalability point for uh, system uh, one intersects the range, the maximum supported workload situation for system one, which is much lower than the operating point required. So the main assumption behind this approach is that the response time curve increases as a function of system arrival rate proportionally to the inverse of one minus the utilization of the bottleneck resource. So now we're going to present to you the classic load testing approach and the classic problems that we face. So usually there is a high manual effort for maintaining load tests. There are no suitable load tests. Load tests need time to execute. And there is a need for complex analysis of performance regression. So usually it takes a very long time to run uh, uh, load testing and you need very specialized people to develop the test, to analyze the test. So when you integrate into continuous delivery pipelines, the classic problems become worse. You have uh, a situation that load tests need time to execute, and now you have fast and frequent releases. So how are you going to execute long tests very frequently? There is a contradiction there, right? You have a high manual effort for maintaining load tests, but you need to do pipeline automation. How are you going to do pipeline automation if you need to maintain your load test continuously? You don't have suitable load tests, but now there is a service focus required for multiple tests. And you have a need for complex analysis. And now you need to implement this complex analysis for every release, so that's impossible to do. So, now we 
present some of the few changes to the methodology introduced by PPTAM to address some of the challenges of integrating performance scalability assessment to DevOps. First, what we did, instead of running very long tests, we break the load test into short tests of about 30 minutes using increased loads. So we implement an ecosystem for full pipeline automation. We, instead of doing a focus on all the services, we focus only on the mostly used services based on operational profile assessment. And instead of manual analysis, we do automated analysis of performance regressions. So the PPTAM production and performance testing based approach is a tool ecosystem and it uses uh, Jupyter for analysis, it uses Bageflow and Fabian, and he has uh, dashboards that can be developed for the UI or can be customized depending on the, what the customer environment is. So now we're going to go to a detail of the approach. So basically the challenge here is to assess performance of architecture deployment alternatives. For example, number of replicas, CPU memory allocation, technology stacks, but you have fuzzy requirements. So the approach uses operational data to generate and weight load test. It measures baseline requirements. The metric allows for a quantitative, quantitative comparison of deployment alternatives and builds on previous work from telecommunication system. This is a, an approach we developed at Bell Labs back in 1995 to do performance testing using Markov chain where each state of the Markov chain represents a different load level. So this methodology was initially presented in 2018 at the European Conference of Software Architecture. We have also a 2019 uh, two paper with the two ecosystem and the 2020 journal paper where we describe the details of the methodology, also the application for anomaly detection and the mirror attacks. So now I'm going to give you some examples how this works. We have a system in production and we observed uh, several load situations. Then you discretize with relative frequency of occurrence and you aggregate those into specific load levels that you want to test, so to generate load tests. Then we define a scalability criteria and we issue a baseline test and we identify baseline uh, architecture deployment configurations and we execute automatically the test and assess pass fail criteria and we come up with a domain metric that tells you what is the fraction of your of the time that your system is going to scale for the defined deployment configuration so we run experiments using a microservice uh, prototype sock shop. We use six low levels and we use 10 configurations using a scalability requirement average plus three standard deviations. So here we see the computation of the domain metric and for one deployment configuration of one gigabyte of RAM, quarter CPU and replica, we saw the get and get card passed and post item fail. This is the operational mix. And for the 250 number of users, we can see that uh, the operational profile assessment gave us 0 0.2, 0370 probability of occurrence of this user load. However, the domain metric only gets 0 0.13580 because of the failure test with the deck, the fraction of the time that that uh, fail test is executed. So here we see all the contributions obtained for all the tests. We 
from 50 to 300 users for one deployment configuration and the max would be one but the actually was 077631 because some of the tests failed so we run this in two in two domains one is a hpi high performance domain and the other was virtual machine domain and the interesting thing here is for this one deployment configuration that you analyzed before for the hpi you have 0 0.77631 However, when we add more instances for the cart replica, you see a degradation in performance. So, so this is a very interesting result that uh, tells us that we need to do detailed performance engineering and assessment of different deployment alternatives because sometimes when you add more resources to a certain architecture, if that resource is not the bottleneck, we may just increase the queue downstream to the bottleneck resource and cause a degradation performance. So here you see the whole uh, polygon where in the blue line, you have the maximum contribution that you can achieve based on the operational profile assessment for 50, 100, 150, 200 users, you have the probability of occurrence on the top. As you run the tests for the different deployment configurations, you see that in the purple shaded line, you, you max uh, all the performance up to 150 users, then you have a steep degradation for that deployment configuration. But for the green one, you see that it's, you, you don't have the, the max, but it's the best overall over the whole range. So now I'm going to describe how this uh, production performance test application monitor can be used also for anomaly detection uh, as a result of Mirai attacks. Uh, so Mirai botnet, botnet is a malware that has been used to turn network devices running Linux into remotely controlled bots. We use it to attack the system and uh, we experimented with three types of different attacks and here we see the two plots on the left side we have a no attacker plot and on the right hand side you have an attack and both use the same configuration of 50 users and you have a zero 0.5 gigabyte quarter cpu two instances and for the one operation create order, you see on the left side there are no violations of the baseline requirements shown as the red line. And on the right hand side, you see a few violations of uh, the baseline requirement. So this completes the what part of the presentation. Now we found problems and want to do the where. Identify which component is impacting the architecture of the system so that's what you call the architecture cockpit and like this is a log a format from the large telecom system that we measure at a large uh, company one of our, our european uh, telecoms and what we get is a counter name a measurement load a service name but what's the problem with this log well like how do we determine pass fail criteria so the this uh, company had a very very good performance test environment they will run run the load test for a very long time but they couldn't decide if it was pass or fail so we use our approach of brain baseline measurement to to identify what is the performance requirement for each of the services and to identify a, a, the pass fail criteria and then to create a multivariate analysis to understand which of the service had the most impact on scalability. So the methodology that we propose 
can serve as a basis for a computationally efficient end-to-end -end algorithm that we show in the end of the presentation. So it starts for the characterization of load test results in terms of uh, two variables. One is the slope of the degradation of the scalability as a function of the increased load levels. And the second is the deviation of the measure response time from the performance requirement. Then we introduce uh, software performance anti-patterns, which are the documented uh, common bad performance implementations. And we create a performance model to characterize the software performance anti-patterns. And you do the same multivariate characterization of the software performance antipathies. And then we develop a step to detect the software performance antipatterns in load testing. So what uh, we see here is we want to take the software performance antipatterns, which represent common defects that impact software performance and you plot them in this uh, space where the x-axis is the normalized distance from the performance requirement. And if you are to the right of uh, the one, it means that you fail the performance requirement. And you have the slope, which has it's a regression line that tells you how fast your system is degrading. We're able to, to plot the software performance anti pattern in this uh, two dimension space. So now we took all the service points from the load test of this telecommunication system and we plotted them on this line and we are able to do a risk assessment to the on the right upper corner you have high impact high risk on the low left corner, you have low impact, low risk. On the left upper corner, what you see is uh, low impact, high risk. And in the right lower corner, you have low risk, high impact. So that uh, could give you hints where you want to invest your refactoring efforts. So by looking at the data, you have this multivariate uh, analysis and uh, it's not so easy to sort this in your hands, so it's nicer to look at a HES diagram that does a graphical representation where you put in each layer on the HES diagram uh, variables with similar weights. So, it, so this immediately tells you that status updates and offline, resource updates, database management and recompose are the candidates to look at for refactoring. So we're able to automatically identify the where, where should invest time to improve your scalability behavior. Now, if you superimpose the two plots, one on, on the blue dots, you see the data from the load testing and the vertical lines are the ranges of uh, the different uh, problems that you can uh, find, we can immediately partition the space into like uh, continuous violated requirements and application hiccups, which is more like a CPU kind of problem, or uh, the expensive database call and the stifle that are database related issues or the empty semi tracks and the blob they are more networking messaging issues so this is an initial result that's very promising and that could serve as a basis for a methodology that uh, can very efficiently detect right where the performance problems are and how to recommend corrections. So first, we define a scalability requirement baseline in terms of uh, measurements of low level performance. 
that we explained the beginning of the presentation. Then you create a partial order of the evaluated service to identify, like we did in the Haas diagram, what are the services most impacting your scalability. Then you define the function to characterize your software performance and the patterns, and that uh, can be what we describe here, looking at normalized this how could be a more complex function, right? And then we define a function to detect the software performance and the patterns in your system based on load testing results. So the detailed methodology is a refinement of previous slide. First, you define a scalability requirement such that you automatically obtain pass fail for each load test. Then you define a multivariate approach where we look at two variables, the slope of the linear regression response time per load and the normalized distance between the measured response time and defined baseline requirements. Then you define a function to characterize software performance anti patterns using this multivariate approach and you identify a set of services that have the largest impact on system scalability. Now, once you propose a detection function, we can easily detect which of the mostly impacting services are close to the software performance and the patterns identified by function F, right? So what is really interesting about this slide, because the normal, the state of the art approach is that for each problem that you have, you have to identify the service, that's a problem, and then you have to investigate all your state space of possible solutions, right? Here, because you use a hierarchical decomposition approach using Q network models, and statistical analysis, what you have done, you have decomposed this approach. So we analyze the load test problems, and then you analyze the software performance anti patterns. So the complexity, the computational complexity of our algorithm is the sum of the time it takes to characterize the software plus the time that takes to characterize the performance anti patterns. While the state of the art approach is the product. The time that takes is the product between the number of, of services you're looking times the number of possible issues that can be identified. So in summary, DevOps provides access to real-time data, enables production and testing integration, and we can use the data from production to understand usage and define efficient uh, tests. And this uh, can be applied for the performance, scalability, security, survivability, and resilience. And our intent is to provide detailed guidance to architects and developers in real time by looking at alternative deployment uh, configurations, which one has the best uh, for certain uh, uh, application and also prioritize component refactoring based on both testing results and provide alternative suggestions for corrections. So we have published in the three venues. In 2019, we, we provided the ecosystem of the two at ICP, the two uh, companion proceedings. In 2018, we published at the European Conference of Software Architecture the details of the methodology. And in 2020, we were able to publish at the Journal of Systems and Software the details of the methodology and also uh, how it is applied to anomaly detection of Mirai security attacks.